What's up YouTube, I am Matador Philip, and today we have another cosplay video. We finished the brooch yesterday, so go ahead and watch yesterday's video if you want the process on how to do that. And today I'm going to be working on Handsome Jack's holster. Got a little template for it that I worked up in Adobe Illustrator. I think you can use pretty much any other graphic software to do something similar, because it's just, it's just shapes. I think even Microsoft PowerPoint will work for this. And the only reason I'm really using this template in the first place is that there's this little guy over here, this little complicated octagon, which I'd rather not have to eyeball. I can cut out the basic form of the holster myself, but that's a little more complicated, so I'd rather have some guidance on that one. This one's gonna be a little bit more involved because it has a lot more precise measurements, and I'm basically making it a box that's gonna serve as a, a way for me to hold my phone during conventions. Because this thing is a monstrosity and will not fit in anything. I would really rather not build a holster to hold this guy because I'm gonna be holding it in my hand anyway. Alright, prep work is pretty much done, so let's go ahead and get started. I usually cut out my paper templates with an X-Acto knife, but for the larger one this time I switched to a pizza cutter tool. I actually don't remember what that thing is called, I just call it a pizza cutter tool. The next part's pretty straightforward, transfer your templates to the foam pieces that you're using, and then you cut them out with the same tools. Always remember to measure twice and cut once, unless you want to have to make some of your pieces of foam again, which is a huge pain in the ass. For the strap I just used pieces of nylon that I bought at Joanne Fabrics and then I just cut out pieces of snap tape and hot glued them to the strap so that it snaps together perfectly. Anyway, flash forward to some time later and you can see that all these pieces have been hot glued together to make this shape that I wanted. I also cut four holes in the side here to allow for the straps that I'm going to be using to attach it to my leg and to the belt that I'm wearing. You can see now the holster and the straps are fully assembled, the whole thing is ready to be painted. Now it's time to get down to painting, which if you want to see more details on that process, click on the annotation right here to see the video in which I painted my previous prop, or look in the description down below. Alright, it's the next day, and here are the fruits of my labor. Here's the finished holster. You can see that I got in a little bit more detail painting than I did on the last one. Can I give you a little bit of a close-up to see the, um... I went in back in and dry brushed some black around it. I did the exact same painting process that I did for this guy. You can also see that I went back and did a little bit more dry brushing on him to kind of get a little bit more black detail and some weathering on that one. So these are both done now. These are finally finished. Uh, it took a lot longer than I wanted to on the holster because I had to make sure that it could actually hold itself up. And I really basically want it to be a thing that I put my phone in during the convention. So I, I put these little bars in on the top to add a little bit of stability, and the whole thing is, uh, it's pretty solid. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I know I mentioned that I did the same painting process as I did in this, so you can go check out this video right now if you want to see how I go about painting it. But another quick little breakdown, basically two coats of primer, really, really thick coats of primer for this one. I really wanted to fill in all those cracks and crevices and make sure it holds itself together a little nicer. Two coats of black, two coats of brown, and then I went in with a paintbrush and did the gold and the silver colors. So you can kind of tell when you look at it, it's a little bit rougher on those two colors, and then I did the black over the top of that. You can see, I don't know if you can see this, but on the inside, the plate there is just hot glued onto everything, the blue plate, which is just like I said before, just like I found a blue plastic box. Actually, hang on, let me show you what it was. I got one of these. You can get them at Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Joann's maybe for like two bucks. So as you can see, like the ridges on the top aren't exactly conducive, but I used the bottom side of it. And the bottom side was all nice and flat, which is what was this right here. So that worked actually perfectly for what I needed. I just used basic nylon for the straps. You can get that at pretty much any craft store. I got mine at Joann Fabrics. And you can see here are these little snaps that I attached to it, and they snap together around the belt. Now, um, in hindsight, I should have used black straps for these. I didn't realize that we had any lying around, so that was kind of dumb, but luckily you can't really see them. They're not all that obvious, so... That's one thing that I would go back and change about this, but it's best I find, like, I, I've, I actually found the nylon worked really well for this because it's a little bit more stretchy. So it gives you a little bit more room for error if your measurements are off a little bit or if your costume takes up a little bit more space than you thought that it would and it doesn't fit quite as well. It allows it to stretch a little bit more, which is perfect because then that means it doesn't compromise the prop that you've built and work so hard on. Because that was a problem I had with the first holster I ever made, which is basically just a, a cardboard box that I covered in some pleather and it, it, it did not hold up well. The straps did not work because the straps were leather, so they had no give. There was no room for error, and then they broke off, I think, within the first hour, so that was not fun. This is way better than what I had before. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you got something useful out of it. Please leave a like if you did and leave a comment down below if there's anything else you want to see me cover or any questions you have about this that I didn't talk about. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Like I've said, I have a lot of these coming out within the next couple weeks as I work on both the cosplays that I'm going to be doing for PAX South. But thank you again so much for watching this video and until next time, adios. Alright, there are a couple things you're going to want to do before you get started. Make sure that you have newspapers or drop cloth or fabric or something that's laid down over the area that you want to work on, just so that things don't get too messy. I'm not using anything fancy for spray paint here either. The, the things that I'm using you can buy either at like Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joanne Fabrics, and the sprayable primer you can probably even pick up at Home Depot.